Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Yeah, so I think at that note, I would like to invite uh, our whip to actually look at to whip on di different issues in summary and also talk about security matters. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Fuwe, and indeed you have been equal to the task in coordinating this press briefing. I also want to start by thanking my dear colleagues who have uh, made a number of submissions, who have spoken to a number of uh, uh, national issues that are affecting our people. I want to commend you, dear colleagues, because speaking for the people is not for the faint-hearted. And um, if we have to stake up our lives on behalf of the people, we must just do that, because they've entrusted their votes with us so that we can stand for them and we can speak for them. So, comrades. I also want to thank you, our media, for finding time. I know that we haven't interacted in a long time uh, since we uh, went on recess. Yes, we are now back and are supposed to be considering reports of the various issues that we have worked on through our committees. As you know, most of our work is done through committees. So, there is a lot that you expect and we shall continue interacting with you um, um, as usual. Um, but I think you have also seen that you are not spared with this road shedding you are all going through. Even when, when we were seated here, you saw the time power <laughs> went. So we are equally um, just going through the same things you are going through, even in our, our homes and where, wherever we are staying. So many things have been said um, uh, uh, from the first speaker, Honorable Chilangwa, up to the last one. We have uh, been talking about our colleagues, some of our colleagues over the challenges. Um, why? Because uh, uh, our colleagues say, Chawana Muzako Chapita Mawa Chilpaiwe. So when one of us, as member of parliament, is uh, found in a very difficult situation, such as Honorable Jeje Banda, we've got a responsibility to highlight those challenges because he's an, a member of parliament with certain privileges that he's supposed to enjoy even if uh, the state sees him as uh, someone who has uh, uh, breached the law. Now, I think a lot of things have been said and we shall continue standing with our colleagues. It's not only Ronald Bojeje Banda who has, been, um, uh, who has had issues. Another honorable member of parliament who is a fellow youth, Honorable Jint Senga, uh, had her property gutted. A home where she was staying bent down to ashes. And you can remember where the, 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 the honorable is, is coming from. In parliament there we say so many things. We even call people that we think have, told, have not told the truth. We, even without being on the floor, we call them. You are a liar. You are what? It is part of parliament. In other jurisdictions, you have seen how certain presidents are stacked in their presence in parliament. It's not unusual that a member of parliament could say something. But we are saying this because when our dear sister, young sister, Jean Tsenga, did say, um, call out um, on the president when he, was when he had finished, because at that point, the president is part of parliament. And whatever that was said by the Honourable Member could have been dealt with within Parliament. And we saw the President again in Honourable Jin Tseng. So why should uh, it be unruly people, criminals, 
Because even as we speak now, there is no investigation that has been undertaken to determine what happened to Jin Senga's property. None. And what I will say for we, all of us, today it could be Jin Senga. Tomorrow it could be someone else. It could even be me or any one of us seated here. So we have every reason to be concerned as members of parliament. It's the same thing with Honorable JJ. Sequence. First thing first, abduction, dealt with clean. If there are other issues that need to be opened, then you open the other issues. That's how systematically and transparent the government should operate. So, we are calling to those that are uh, responsible to make sure that these matters are dealt with. So that the members of the public can know what, should, what has been happening to their leaders. You know, our colleagues came into government and assured you that they are the ended Qatarism. Some of us questioned and said, look, this you cannot end th these things by just lamentations. In the recent past, you have seen what has happened in Mukushi. Kadas had to go to the council chamber, UPND Kadas, to go and beat their own councillors, including their, 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 their council chairperson and the the, 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 the people that were being, having elections. Daylight. Up to the day, no arrests have been made. You have heard people calling conference, uh, press briefings and issuing hate speech. Nothing. But you have seen those from the opposition, how quickly they have been rounded up on the same allegations of wet speech. Can does that to go to deck Drug Enforcement Commission officers, manned by the police, held a procession. And as you know, to hold a procession, you must not try the police. But Kadas with impunity, had a procession when the first family was appearing before deck. And they were audible to everybody insulting the former head of state and his family. And the police were there. So, even when we saw officials coming to apologize and say the police should investigate, how do you investigate? How does the police investigate the, the event they have witnessed? You go to the market today, so wait to another market, bus stations, go and see what is happening, colleagues from the media. How people are being uh, terrorized there by Kadas. If Kadarism was not good during our time, it must not be good now. It mustn't. And I've publicly said if there's something I could have done more, personally, than my colleague Sitchin Jaya, was to deal with this issue of Kadarism. He acknowledged that. So, the events that we have seen doesn't speak to a situation where Qatarism has been dealt with, especially the violent Qatarism. If people can be watched insulting, because I wouldn't even want the current president, because he's the next president to be former head of state. We've got only one out of the six, the next one will be the current president. I wouldn't want to see him being disrespected. Even now, as head of state. So, we shall criticize him for what he's doing wrong, real time, but with respect yeah. and dignity. That we shall do. Because we are responsible leaders. We don't have to be part of his party to respect him. He's the head of state for the, all the people of Zambia. And that's why we, when people talk about uh, the, 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 the issues uh, regarding his promises, we shall talk about them in the context of how they were made and how they are being implemented now. That is what we do in offering oversight functions without fear or favor. So what you have witnessed, Kadas doing all sorts of uh, uh, lawlessness, it had to take the event which took place at a graveyard where Kadas went on rampage 
probably they, they, they attacked those that were able to go to the president directly. It had to take the president to ask the police to swing into action. How? This is a police command who have been able to say, no, we can't allow people to have uh, public meetings because the others are ready to attack them. Who said it? That, that is acknowledging failure. And you should spare the president to start contemplating the usage of uh, the, the, the military. Who is who are provided for in the constitution? And their intervention in internal security is restricted by the constitution. So, sir, commander in chief, it's within your power to make sure that those that are responsible for law and order and internal security do the right job. We thought by you substituting the former IG, it was to improve on the policy and the maintenance of law and order by getting some uh, IG from a retirement shelf <laughs> who had been uh, off duty for more than 10 years. We didn't condemn it just because we, didn't, we, we were condemning it. There is a report here at Parliament from the Committee Responsible for Security Matters which went around to see the performance of police. And in their recommendation, they have stated that officers do not feel inspired and confident by going to bring someone who had retired a long time. There are so many capable men and women who have been progressing through the, the rank and file of Zamba police. What you do by going to get to retrieve someone from retirement is to press a, a caveat on the prospects of those that have been with the system. So is it working? The answer is simply no. Now you have even going to attack the church. The president the other day was saying, let's collaborate with the church. The bishop of Kabwe hosts a former head of state in a private talk. The theater, not even in public, without any threat to public order. You storm there as police. He's not supposed to be there. What kind of behavior is that? President Lungu, whether we like him or not, is a former head of state, former commander in chief. So who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing to do by doing that? I would have spoken about my my successor, the minister of home affairs, but I know that he doesn't micromanage the police because that shouldn't be his duties. So you now have to in Indola just a few days ago. All the churches now, the churches where people are free to go and congregate. And when you are going to church, you are not just going as a political party. We meet there from various political parties, different tribes and everything. It's a church which we, where we converge. Now you go and disrupt services for the people. Why? Just why? Abantu wa yamu kusali kakura tukuma na wonse wa ama politician. Imitu ndi wonse tukuma na ama church. Eko mwana tumombiwa kapokola ni mishi shinga. Okuwe mbisa na maketi. Elo wakateka wale andakitu wombele pamone church. Mwana wombele pamone church sha. So, tuwali ufama shu yala ingreva ak bishop wa Benjamin. Piri, kundona. E, as politicians, tatufu ilo kutoka mpeni mma church. Because we have to, to, to preach unity. If you have given an opportunity to greet people in church, you must be unified. That's what we are. When you are elected, even where we are in constituencies, when we are elected, we are a multi-party society. As a member of parliament, Honorable Kafuaya is an MP for all the people in Ilunte, yeah. including those that didn't vote for him, including parties that didn't for him. Absolutely. So we are very well vested with this unifying role we have as people's representatives. 
So no lo tuya kuma chechi to the shiba kuta mama chechi tamu ni feba pf weka weka muri na avantu wa basi pani fimbi. So kanzi kuro kuro nda kwa bisho mkuu yetu ali umfaka ili kuna nati suminisha lelo serafiri mwalandi le ba police valike ba inspector general le kenyo kuta ras avantu. So national security and the food security are inseparable. Umuli insala tamu mtende. If I'm under a child, my son that the child on Bani disaster. Bushe, everyone for a can of poker, come on, child on in on in on in. We had this a new no effects in 2019, 2015, 2016. That's how we started stockpiling food. And that's why you had us insist to our colleagues that this food we have, we have found, we have been stockpiling it over a period of time for a rainy day. So that we don't put our people in the hunger, much poor, in the fear What did they do? Mwale mono for wale tola ukamu wa mutoro to affect the national security. We shall never ever stop exporting maize where possible, even minimum. Umu Lelo wa isa wela yo, we are going to import 650 metric tons of maize. Ebu tunguru shi uvo. <laughs> na mfeni panga ndava na wale kumona wa isa sendo wunga wa yamu kushitisha. Which is meant for them. Elo ni nesala ya kari pawa, ya haba, na mku mwona wa fube. <laughs> Ndi ya mkongo leo fia kutishite. Ifi. Epo mwone mwono kati, when we are talking, we are not just politikin. You heard that even here where we are, in addressing you, the press, we lamented that this reckless decision by government to export all the mess they found will give us problems. Here, the local government for fifty. Imwe na imwe we imwe we kere apa ma salary zi daya bala asela po. Baku tushu tevi akabungo biki mukona imwe number. Unomba mwingi lemo yungu la fulako. Avantu, hawa ishifura na nguchimo. Hawa ishikuwa itipakumo kwa. What is happening to them? Efe mwile kwa chila nomba nama janki. Muma kombo ni umu. Hawa anawali fumapa maya ndata pali uwali. Tapali chakuli ya. Vaya mungu chita rasa avantu. Ukutipa kwa tewe chakuli. It affects national security. So there is a very direct nexus between food security and national security. So, when I inspect the general of police, we are just requesting you to be responsible for all the Zambian people. It's an indictment when you hear your commander-in-chief saying, if you fail, I'm going to use the army commander. It's an indictment on you. And we... Uh, just uh, imploring the commander in chief if he has to just make changes to make the police function, let him do that. Unlike opting for the other option of reverting to the Zambian, because what that means is simply suspending the constitutional order. Police have got a duty, they are part of the judicial system. If you transgress to break the law, they will arrest you and take you to the court because they are not an ending to themselves. But that the Zambia army are not anywhere there. What they deal with is court martial for their establishment. So we would want you to start up enforcing the public order act equitably. Stop politicking about law enforcement. Now you don't even want to allow people to go to church. How? Again, you are not the first inspector general of police. You are not going to be the last. And you are not above the law, just like all of us. So we don't want you to be accountable for what is happening now when you are supposed to be enjoying retirement. No, it's not desirable. The issue of electricity, as you have seen, 
Where there is darkness, it's a, a fertile ground for criminality. So lack of electricity is also posing a challenge to it. security. Now, your minister, in responding to one of our questions on the floor, acknowledged and agreed that he has been exporting power. But the, now the quantities of megawatts he has been he mentioned on the floor, now it is seemingly that he wasn't sincere. He misled the nation. Because from his admission on the floor of the house, he said they were exporting, exporting 195 megawatts of power. When he was sitting next to the government spokesperson and the government spokesperson mentioned that the government had, through cabinet had resolved to recall 100 megawatts from the power they were exporting through the SADC power pool. And he further went and said the remaining 195 megawatts we are still negotiating. So if you had 100 and 195, what does it give you? 295. Now, if they are saying 295 is what they are exporting, probably it is more. Now, how can you opt to cripple your own economy and punish your own citizens? Those people who live hand to mouth, barber men, welders, saloon owners, at the expense of saving others. Is that the reason why we borrowed to generate power? The answer is no. These manufacturing industries, the Lamasatis, the Zambia Brewalis, Trade Kings, have got people working for them. So if they are not able to produce on account of less power, you see your people, your Zambian citizens, on the streets. Is that the desire? So, first of all, they were not sincere with the number of megawatts they are exporting, and two, they were reckless to start exporting at the expense of people. Now you want to even uh, uh, arrest people for having charcoal. If someone has got no power, what else are they going to use to cook food? How many people are able to buy solar and everything that you are bringing on the market? Gas stoves. Gas stoves. Very few. So, let's be sensible Zambian citizens. Lastly, we had the ministerial statement from the Minister of Foreign Affairs yesterday talking about the issues raised by Zimbabwe. Again, through the House and even here on this platform, we told you that by accepting to host AFRICOM command center, we are going to create challenges with other surrounding nations. Because that's not a command center for Zambia. It's a command center for uh, military operations by the USA, which can be done on any other country. We have had good relationships with the United States of America, even without allowing them to host an Af Af African here. So, when if Zimbabwe were expressing their concerns, and we heard them. We had a chance to understand their feelings. What about the others who are not talking? What about the others? That's why yesterday we asked the Minister of Foreign Affairs that if you find through the engagements, there are platforms that we have, and Zambia is chairing the Troika Organ on Security, Peace, Political, uh, Peace and Security. It's a very key organ of SADC. So what Zambia would need would be a, a, at least an, a, a, a consent from their colleagues they share common uh, values with. Zimbabwe and Zambia were known as Southern and Northern Rhodesia. That's why they are referred to as Siamese twins. Added was Nyasaland, which is now Malawi, under the Federation, colonized by the British. So we have been one and the same. There are people that have grown up here from Zimbabwe, when they came before the Zimbabwe got independence in 1980. 
the president, current president of Zimbabwe, had more of his life here. He was here at the University of Zambia, coming from Mungwa. So you can't be worried about this place which you should consider as a second home. So whilst we want them to engage in bilateral discussions, that thing for Africa, if it starts detaching us away from our brothers and sisters within the Sadiq region, must be considered and cancelled. And that won't jeopardize the relationship that we have enjoyed with the United States. No. I talked about food insecurity. And now we are worried about the food for work. Kubombele fia kolia nomba. Kote tuale tuala didifu. Tuale tuala vantu nomba kula kubombele fia kolia. Uku kuirida. How? Yes. We have been declared a disaster. Now I want to tell you that during our time, we didn't only experience disasters, and food insecurity in other regions where there was no rain, we also had to deal with COVID-19, which ravaged this country. COVID-19. From 2018, 2019, 2020. And the economy was almost coming to a, to a halt. And so if we didn't save some of the debt obligations because the economy was static, we had to deal with this COVID that we all didn't know. And our colleagues were saying, let's close the nation. We have no apologies to make. No apologies to make, but we saved lives. Lives which, which could have perished. We had to cancel the expenditure of resources and we are not getting any revenue anyway. Because all the economy was shut. But we had to save lives. We had to make people have food. So we can't regret that no, the certain obligations that we didn't meet as a result of that. So just face the reality and deal with it. You are in charge. This is the declaration of disaster. If it was meant to attract support, there's no significant support that has come. Who say when I felt we are disaster, charity disaster? <laughs> so we are not going to be cowards. We will speak for the people, and we will shall offer checks and balances Credible. credibly, without fear or favor. Once again, it's been a pleasure to have you, dear colleagues, and we thank you for making time to be with us. And God bless you. We know what you are going through. We know the challenges that you are facing as well. You move on public transport. And we know that your employers might want to give you more. But we know the challenges they are facing. So we need to address these matters so that we can speak for you. Because the minimum wage which is now in place is now irrelevant. It has been overtaken. The economics we were told, we were lectured to, of increasing prices in order to reduce is not, not working, Madam Vice President, Acting President. I want to know you learn so that people can feel that you are caring for them. They are the main opposition you have. As you can hear us every other time, but the main opposition you have are those starving masses out there who are struggling to put food on the table. And they are employers. <laughs> they are our employers. If we don't work for them, we are very really. And it won't be strange. Thank you, Bonafo. Thank you so much. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.